I want you to go and push on the little notepad, hit Save to Google Drive, and log in so that you can have notes on this. The first 10 slides or so, you're not going to need the notes function. But when we get to the history samples, you'll want to take notes before we, we go over. So like the, the thing that we know right now is that we want to not use first person, second person, or third person, right? Like that's, that's not something that we're ever going to say. We're not going to, um, we're not, it's not ever the author alone. You can't just say the author. You got to tell me who the author is. And then the last thing is that do not use pronouns. So those are the notes, the general notes that we have already discussed when we talk about when, when we're looking at perspective or point of view, we want to be able to not use those things. Again, if your English teacher tells you to use them, then that's fine. That's a whole different way of writing than the way that I'm trying to teach you as a historian. Are we clear? Okay. All right, so I see everybody's screen is there. You guys wrote down your general notes right now. And we're going to go ahead and go forward. And I'm going to ask you, what do you see? Do you see an old lady or a young lady? Do you see the old lady? If your neighbor can see the old lady, have them point it out to you. All right, so your young lady is right here. Let's change the color. Your young lady's right here. Here's her eye. Here's her cheekbone, right? Here's her ear. She's looking off this way. That's the young lady. The old lady, here's the eye. Here's the nose. Here's the mouth. Her nose is right here. Right? You guys see it? Oh. Oh, my An old lady and young lady, right? See both. Yeah. All right, let's take a look at this next thing. Is it moving? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Do we see a heart? Yeah. Yeah. Face? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Easy, right? Do we see a face? Yeah. Do we see the flower? Yeah. Okay. Easy. Is it moving? No. No. Focus on one point in the middle. Is there a space like a space bubble? Everybody focus on the cross in the middle. Oh, I see. It's so weird. I think you have to read something. Yeah, doubt so good. Oh, my God. Where are they going? No, wait. Oh, oh, wait. Oh, 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 so what happens when you look at it in the, like right in the middle? What happens? You have oh my god. Okay, so they disappear. If you blink, what happens? They turn green. 
At this point, can you trust your eyes? Yeah. Do you see the face? Yeah. Do you see the hand? Yeah. Are they connected? Oh, oh my God. God. But they're not. Yeah. Written all over his face. Wow. Someone really said my name. Everybody see this? me why would we why would we not give that credit for sourcing for for answering that question okay it's they and what else does it do that breaks the rule of ours pronouns right she and it right is it she she's it 
differently because she really, really, really bad with that. How about this one? Let's look. So what's wrong with this one right now? <laughs> what's missing? No. How it's different than the child's, right? It's missing because it doesn't answer the question. How about... Mother's point of view is that the mother's job is to protect her child from danger or harm. That's why even the less, least dangerous things seem more dangerous to a mother. Again, missing the part about the child. All right, finish that. All right, let's take a look at this next one. So go ahead and hit submit. on the boat seeing land is excited because that person was able to discover or found new land. That's not why they're excited. Why are they excited? Because they could have been at sea for a long time. That land looks great to someone who has been at sea for a long time, right? You need that because statement, that prepositional phrase there, to be able to explain why that person's excited. And it's definitely not that they found new land, it's that they see land for that time. Go ahead and finish here.
one would earn minimum credit. Right? They've been on a boat for quite some time and they're relieved. So like, why? And so what? They're relieved. So that he can rest. It works. Minimal. Alright, let's look at the next one. would say testing is a positive way to test a student's knowledge on the concepts they are learning in class. People, who is Miss Masuga? I know it's me, but who is it? And how does being a teacher influence that point of view? If you have not wrote something about me being a teacher, please add it now. Let me remind you also, there is no I or you in this. Do not use pronouns.
assessment tools to see if her students are learning anything, right? Like, you want more detail in this, people. Please don't shortchange your answer. finish up. The studio would say the generic teacher answer, teaching is great, way to help test your knowledge and figure the areas you need help in. As a teacher, Mr. Studio would see the progress of our students and help them in the areas they need help with, saying that generic answer will make test taking seem more important than it actually is. Ooh, easy. I should probably get it. All right, let's go to the next thing. So I need you to read through this. You can scroll through to see this story, but I would like you to read through this story. Why would the artists of the 15th and 16th century use this as like a topic of a painting? Why would they do that? What was going on in the 15th and 16th <coughs> century? The Renaissance. Yes, the Renaissance is the answer, right? And that they looked for scenes from the Bible to paint. Tell me why that, that Renaissance art artists would use scenes from the Bible. Who is a patron of Renaissance artists? The church. The church had money to have the Renaissance artists come and paint for them. All right, let's look at this first painting, and I want to ask you, who is the artist? Who is the artist? I'm not looking for a name. Like, I don't want you to take it, reverse image, Google search kind of thing, and give me a name of a painting, a painter. But what do we know about the artist? They probably painted for the church. They probably painted for the church. It's a Bible scene, right? It's student. They probably a Catholic painter, perhaps. What else do we know about the artist? I put the full picture Emma, on the front screen for you so you can see that I that I cut off the sword. That I cut off the sword 
and that she's holding a sword in her hand. Like that's the sword that she cut the, the head off with. And that I wanted you to see that in the full picture up on the screen. But the, how do you feel in this? How does Judith feel in this picture? She what? She looks kind of sad. Like really sad? How sad? Is she distraught? Is she really upset? No. No, she's not really upset. Okay. She looks very passive, right? Like very indifferent about this. It's like, here's the head. Here's the head. Thank you, servant. Take the head. Right? Like she's not, she, she's not connected to that. Who could have been the artist? If we know it's a Catholic painter, I don't answer that. Let's look at the next one and see if you can feel a difference between the two photos. Let's see if we can see a difference. Do we feel a difference? Okay, what does this painting have that the other one didn't? Okay, lots of blood. Emotion. What kind of emotion is in this painting? Anger, brutality. What else? Judith? No. Judith had the now you can see like his whole body and he's struggling. So he's still going to take the So the first one. The first one dehumanizes the head, right? So that we have more empathy for the Judith king. or the king. Judith, so you see more reason. So for more reason for her to do what she asked. Who could the artist be for this? Non paid by the church. Okay. Um, I'm not going to go with that. I'm not going to take a nationality. What do you got? A what? A witness of it. Well, I mean, considering it was the Old Testament, it was probably 2,000 years before this painting was made, a witness probably isn't going to be the one. But I don't think you're totally wrong with that statement. What could the painter have been a witness to or a victim of? Abuse. Do you feel it? Right? Do you feel that this painter has witnessed or has been abused from the feeling and the emotion in this painting? So could this, what could this painter be? Okay, so what is, what, what could this painter be? Who could it be? What do you think? A woman. A woman, absolutely. The name of this painter is Artisma uh, Brunichelli. And that she studied under Caravaggio. And that Caravaggio, her teacher, her, her mentor, her everything, who taught her all of the techniques of this painting, also abused her. Do you feel it in that painting? Now that you see it. So when you see something so different with the same kind of subject matter, right? If we go back to that first painting, look at Judith. She's pale. She's indifferent. She's cold. It dehumanizes the man. Like what? Like that's so a man of the church painting that who doesn't have access to woman's emotions and thoughts and feelings. You see it now? You need to be aware of that when you approach pictures, because knowing the authors, like why did they put their brush to the, the canvas, knowing that 
helps you understand the painting. Helps you understand why there's either passion or lack of passion. So this one being passion, right? All right, let's look at this one. What's going on in this picture? Who painted it? Okay, who was the winner? Okay, so we know that about this picture. The source line tells you everything, right? I want you to look at that source line first before you do anything. So we see that the sides are equally balanced, right? There's machine guns and there's there's exactly the same kind of artillery on each side. So it's not really clear from the picture who could have won that until you take a deeper look. What's going on? People, in battle, I need to ask you, can someone reach down to their enemy and chop off the head of the penis in battle. No, there's no time for that. Let me tell you, if your buddy is having that happen to you, what or happen to him, what are you going to do? If you're losing, you're getting out of there, right? Like, I don't want that to happen to me. So, is this an artist's liberty? Absolutely. What does it represent? Dominance. It's not just victory, right? It's complete dominance. If that painter shows this kind of detail in that painting, he's showing not just that we won the battle, but we dominated the battle, right? We had time to bend out and do that to our enemy. People. Was the painter at the, at the battle? Probably not. Probably half those people in that first in the in the zoom out weren't at that. I mean, look at that. There are saints and there are kings and there are you know prophets up. Like anybody under an umbrella is somebody that probably wasn't there. The dude in a cloud on the white horse, saint. Remember, the Ethiopians are Coptic Christians. They believe in Jesus. That they they believe in the saints. So. That idea that all of those people were witness to that is very much a liberty the painter took when he took that and he painted that. But the source line tells you everything. The detail is where you go, and that's how he showed dominance. All right, I need you to read this, please. Thank you for reading that. Tell me, what does a papal ambassador mean? Say it again. So someone who serves the Pope, right? Papal means Pope. This is where you might want to take notes. Tell me how a papal ambassador would know anything about like a good supply of arrows or battle axes or like you know um, bows and crosswinds, a hook to drag them off or you know the the knives and and a, a shield or something that has double thickness helmet and armor and arrows how would a papal someone who serves the pope have any knowledge of this kind of military stuff Okay, you could have spent a lot of time with the Mongols. Remember, the Mongols were, were very tolerant people. They had access to a lot of um, different kind of religious people. Okay. But, like, how would he even know 
to notice these things. What do you got? He was trying to escape. No, I mean, like, there's something here that makes it so that, so that this Pope server has had access to, like, a military. Look at the time frames. What did you just say? As exactly. So the Crusades were like 1091 to 1295. So this happens right in the middle of it, right? That's how he would know. That's how anybody that serves the Pope would have military experience be able to recognize like what would work and what wouldn't work is because they've been exposed to war before. They've, they've had to have tactical conversations. When they're not in war, a pope servant usually wouldn't pay attention to any kind of, uh, of military thing, right? They wouldn't have, it wouldn't be something that they like prey on or, or whatnot. So I had you say that, and I gave you the answer. Now, without pronouns, I want you to write out the answer to this statement. Without pronouns. time period given was in the middle of the Crusades, meaning that the Pope was capital ambassador would have knowledge of the military and considering that they were at war. Does that answer, like, why the, pa the papal ambassador would know anything about the military? Like, it's not really answering the question. Please rephrase that. Sorry. The papal ambassador would have knowledge about the military because of this time period was around the Crusades, a time when the Pope and papal ambassadors would be exposed to war. This would la allow the papal ambassadors to know the details about the military. 
That's more of an answer than the first one. So you structure yours some, somewhat similar. ambassador with Nobel and would have experience with the military due to the Crusades and events that drew men from all over Europe uh, that had been occurring at roughly the same time. Additionally, ambassadors would have been spending time with the Mongols due to their cosmopolitanism and would be able to use the skill gained through the Crusades to recognize how to best fight the Mongols. I would use a prepositional phrase at the end of that and say, should they attack? Couple links, or should they attack where the ambassador was privy to, or something like that? All right, try to finish this one up. Did I take it away? If I didn't, I'm sorry. Let's take a look at the next one. With the next one, the answer is not the Crusades. The answer is not the Crusades. What's a friar? Say it again. He lives in a monastery. Okay. Yeah. So it's part of a Catholic order of Franciscan monks, right? So the, he's a monk and he lives in a monastery. So he's very religious. I mean, notice what he's, what he's paying attention to, right? that there's 12 pagan temples, and that there's two mosques, and that there's one church, right? That this, this uh, city of Karakoram, which is uh, the Mongol city that is built after Genghis' death, because Genghis would have been horrified of building a city to, to put wealth in, that this city... Uh, was in the middle of the Silk Road, that it was something that was just incredibly safe because, A, it's the Mongol stronghold, right? So, like, plates of gold and whatnot could sit out onto uh, the street and no one would touch it. But where's St. Denis? Denis? It's in France, okay. And is he saying that it's it's, Better than or worse than Karakoram? Yes. And the question that I'm going to ask you is why is he saying that that's better? And so that's what you're going to actually answer. So I'm not going to answer this question for you. I would like you to look and answer this question right here. The answer is not the Crusades. 